Good morning. I'm Dr. Thomas E. Gamble, president of Brevard Community College. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the Fall B.W. Simpkins Business Seminar for Entrepreneurial Development. We're pleased to have with us the series founder, Mr. Bernie Simpkins. It is... It is through his vision and generous contribution that this lecture series is possible. The series has brought nationally known entrepreneurs to Brevard County. They include Truett Cathy of Chick-fil-A, Bo Calloway of Calloway Gardens, Al Newharth of USA Today, Chuck Clementi of America Online, and most recently, Tony Jennings of J. Jennings and Sons Construction and the Florida Lieutenant Governor. This important and relevant lecture series continues to bring the best and the brightest entrepreneurs to Brevard. Please join me in welcoming me, as well as thanking Bernie Simpkins for making this series of entrepreneurial seminars possible. Thank you, Dr. Gamble. Let me welcome you, especially students, faculty, and all the community leaders and people here. Uh, these series are very important to a lot of people, especially to the students that are trying to find a spark in their life of just what they want to do. But I'm supposed to keep this real short, so I want to especially thank Dr. Gamble for his leadership in working with this series and bringing these people in and selection, selecting them. We have a committee that's very important. Let me introduce that committee to you. Uh, Dr. Pat Fuller, if you'll stand, if you'll hold your applause until I get them all introduced. Dr. Pat Fuller, who is chairman of the committee, he's at the Titusville campus. Ms. Vicki Peak, who is vice chairman, and she's at the Small Business Institute at the Melbourne campus. Of course, Dr. Gamble's there. Mike Kalidzinski, are you here? Please stand up and remain standing as I call you, please. Uh, he was at the last one. Uh, Dr. Mar Mrs. Marina B Barishan, are you here? I think she was the last one. In Ingrid Matta, where are you, Ingrid? She's the one that really puts us all together. There she is. And, and we thank her and Valerie and her assistants. Allison Pittman, Ms. Alice Pittman, are you here? I know that my daughter Jill is here. She's on the committee. Uh, where are you, Jill? Stand up there. And, and likewise, Scott McHugh, my good friend from Lakeland, Florida. He's CEO and of a large real estate magnitude investment group there, formerly with uh, Merrill Lynch, but he decided he wanted to be an entrepreneur. Welcome, Scott, and thank you for coming. Uh, the purpose of these seminars is to bring in entrepreneurs to Brevard County and BCC to speak about their efforts to find economic success through innovative ideas and to tell you how you can be successful. There are two a year, one in the spring and one in the fall, so we'll let you know about the one coming up in the spring of next year. Thank you. Stedman Graham is chairman and CEO of S. Graham and Associates, a management and marketing consulting company specializing in education and corporate markets. As a speaker and businessman, he presents and offers seminars on the topics of leadership, success, growing a business, diversity, health, and personal and professional branding. A sample of clients include Merrill Lynch, Wells Fargo, ProLine International, Hyatt Hotels Corporation, Manpower, CNN, Glasgow Smith Klein, Plains Capital Corporation, U.S. Department of Labor, Job Corps, Credit Suisse First Boston, Harvard, and the Wharton Business School and the U.S. Department of Education. Graham has authored New York Times bestsellers, You Can Make It Happen, A Nine-Step Plan for Success, and Teens Can Make It Happen, Nine Steps to Success. Other books include You Can Make It Happen Every Day, A Motivational Pocketbook, Build Your Own Life Brand, The Ultimate Guide to Sports Marketing, 
an industry textbook he co-authored, and his most recent book, Move Without the Ball, a collection of principles that teaches students that sports are a part of life, not life itself. He founded and directed George Washington University's Forum for Sport and Event Management and Marketing, the first of its kind in the country, and also AAD Education, Health and Sports, a nonprofit organization of athletes and other civic leaders committed to developing leadership in underserved youths, an organization with over 500 professional athletes ADD, or excuse me, AAD has served over 15,000 students and has awarded $1.5 million in scholarships. He's actively involved in education as an adjunct professor at the University of Chicago and the University of Illinois at Chicago. He serves on the National Board of Junior Achievement and the 7-Eleven Education is Freedom Foundation. And he is a member of the Economic Club and the Metropolitan Club of Chicago. It gives me great pleasure to present Mr. Stedman Graham. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much for that. It's a pleasure to be here. I um, want to thank Dr. Gamble for uh, the opportunity to be able to speak to you today, this morning, and uh, have a chance to spend some time with Mr. Simpkins chance to talk, he's, um, he really kind of epitomizes what I talk about, which is to be able to find your passion and find what you love to do and use your brain to be able to think about all of the possibilities based on who you are as a person. So it's a pleasure to spend time with him and I thank him for the sponsorship of this series and the idea to create it. Uh, I'm looking through this, have any, any of you seen this? Here? Okay, I'm sure you have, right? So it says on the front, I don't know if you can read it, it says higher learning. My theme is kind of built around this, higher learning. How do you get higher learning? I talked about this this morning, higher learning. Boy, that's interesting. How do I get from here to higher learning? Well, that's kind of hard to do, higher learning. Because we think we, we're at higher learning, don't we? we? We really think we're there, don't we? I mean, we look like it, we act like it. Some of us, you know, we walk around, you know, head high, and you can't tell us anything, can you? We got the title, we got the money, we got the car, we got the house, we got all the stuff that makes us think that we are what? That we have higher learning. And we live in a world that, that uh, you know, we, that makes us think we, that, that we, we're there and we buy into the illusions of television and buy into the media stuff and buy into all this, those things that kind of empower us. And for the young people here, we listen to the what? We listen to the music, right? That makes us feel what? That we are higher learning, that we got it. We listen to the rappers and the rappers say, you know, I'm, I want you to buy this music that what? Makes you think what? Makes you feel empowered. And it's interesting, though, we, we live in a world where we get up at, uh, I'm not saying y'all, we get up in the morning at 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, any 4 o'clocks here? <laughs> Let's give him a round of applause, 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> okay, 4 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, wash our face, we brush our teeth, we maybe grab something to eat, we uh, then... Go off to work. If you got kids, you make sure they get off to school. And we spend all day at work, you know, how many hours? Six, eight, seven, nine hours, 12 hours, whatever the case may be. And we come home and we fix dinner and we spend some time with the family. We watch television. And then we go to bed and maybe we what? Maybe we dream. That is Monday. What do we do on Tuesday? This is interactive. This is a seminar. What do we do on Wednesday? What do we do on Thursday? What do we do on Friday? Friday, you're right, okay. I was waiting on that over here. Saturday, what do we do? We wash, we lay out in the sun, we clean up, we shop, we, you know, all those things. We watch television at night, Saturday night. We go out, Sunday, most people go to church, and we eat chicken dinners in the afternoon. 
My father used to cook the same, same chicken dinner over, over and over all the time, right? Same way. And then we get ready for what, ladies and gentlemen? Monday. And how long, not y'all, how long can some people do that for? A lifetime. Interesting. How long is a lifetime? A lifetime. And they look back and they say, you know what? I've been doing the same thing over and over for 40 years. I have no more in the end than I had in the beginning. And let me ask you something. Y'all are smart. Y'all are bright. If you did the same thing over and over, or if you did the same thing you did yesterday, as you would do today, as you would do tomorrow, what have you done? The same thing with, which is what? The same thing which equals what? Nothing. <laughs> so if you did the same thing over and over every single day, you did the same thing you did yesterday, as you did today, as you would do tomorrow, what have you done? You've already done it. You've done nothing. Why? Because we never get a chance to do what? T H I N K. We never get a chance to think. Because we're so busy, what? <laughs> Working, giving basically everything away. And the world says to you, you don't know who you are. You don't know your potential. You don't have a sense of where you're going. You're on the treadmill. So I'm going to, if you don't know who you are and where you're going or what your life is going to be like, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to control your life. I'm going to take care of you. But in order for me to take care of you, I've got to put you at different levels. So what am I going to do? I'm going to define who you are. And they define you. They say, you know what? If you're black, African American, we want to define you as a second class citizen. And we do whatever we can to what? Make you think you are less than. And how many African Americans in this country buy the fact that they can't make it because they're not good enough? 50%? Can I get 60? Can I get 70? Can I get 80? Millions and millions of people have been programmed to believe what? That they are a second class citizen. Labeled. That's a second-class citizen. And, and, and when you believe you are a second-class citizen, how do second-class citizens act? They act second-class. Program. And, you know, we can, move from, we can move to Hispanic, same thing. We can move to other people of color. Let's talk about women. We've got a lot of women in here. This looks like the Oprah show. I know y'all wanted to hear that. I know y'all wanted to hear her name. <laughs> How many women have been programmed to believe that it's a man's world? Not y'all. Not y'all. But live in the box. How many millions of women around the country, what? Are not able to reach their potential based on the programming that they get every single day? 50%. 60%? So if you have an idea, you say, you know what, I have an idea. They say, you know, what are you doing with an idea? <laughs> Who told you to think? And so, okay, I'll get my place. And it doesn't make any difference whether you're, what color you are, whether you're white, you, you know, you could have been programmed by your parents who might have said what? Son or daughter, you're nothing, you're never going to be anything. And so you buy into the what? The program. The question I asked you is simply, what is your program? What was your program? And 
how do you break out of that program? And young people, how do you not become, you know, I worked in the prison system for five years. I didn't say I was in the prison system for five years now, okay? <laughs> but how do, you, how do you not wind up what? With your life taken away because you're bought into somebody else's program who tries to do what? Make you less than them. And how do you overcome the labels? You know, I talk about this a little bit. They, they try to label me, put me into a box based on what? My relationship. <laughs> I know y'all said it. Don't say y'all didn't say it. <laughs> I got to deal with that. Well, who's, who's coming to speak to y'all th this morning? <laughs> Oprah Winfrey's boyfriend's going to speak to y'all this morning. So I'm, I'm glad Dr. Gamble didn't introduce me as Oprah's boyfriend. So, so the labels, imagine all over the world, you got to what? You got to prove yourself every single day based on what? Who you are, not who people think you are. I'm lucky. I'm lucky. You know why? I get a chance to do what? Think. Because I got pressure on me every time I walk out the door. And let me tell you, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Because I'd rather have the pressure than think I have made it right where I am. See, I get a chance, I get a chance to grow. I get a chance to, to, to figure out how, OK, how do I influence you? How do I develop even more? That's what this is for. That's what the school is for. That's what Dr. Simpson, I mean, Mr. Simpson, what, what did he do? He said, oh, I want to start this so you could what? You could begin to learn how to do what? Not buy into the educational system completely that teaches you what? How to memorize, how to take tests, repeat the information back. And if I asked you what you learned two weeks later, what would you say? I don't know. So don't get hung up on the what? On the piece of paper. Get hung up on the thinking. Change the way you think and feel about yourself every single day. And the world's trying to do what to you? They don't want you to do that. Why not? Because then I can control you. I can keep you where? On the mental plantation. What's the question? The question is, how do I buy myself back? How do I own myself? Hard, isn't it? Because you may have one person who says, stand up and says, you know what, I got an idea. So this person stands up and says, I have an idea. And what's the group say? What are you doing standing up with an idea? Please sit down. And she says, no, I'm not going to sit down. I, ha I, have, I have an idea. I got this idea. And I'm going to, you know, I want to make this happen. I, you know, I, I have an expense account. I have, um, you know, right now I have, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm comfortable. But I have an idea. And I'm passionate about that idea. And the group says, what now? No. You better sit down. We told you to sit down. So you start gossiping about her. You start making up stuff, right, to try to get her to pay attention, sit down. She says, no, I'm not going to sit down. I'm going to stand up. And I believe in this idea so much, I'm willing to die for it. And the group says, well, we're going to send a hit person after you. <laughs> so they send a hit person after you to take you out because your idea does what? makes other people begin to get out of their comfort zone. And so, so they, they, they send the hit person after you, and they, 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 they eliminate John Kennedy. And they eliminate Gandhi. And they eliminate Dr. King. Because of what? Because you don't think like everybody. Body else. So when you're independent, when you have an independent idea, the world says to you what? 
Who do you think you are? And so leadership, that's called leadership. That's why they try to kill the what, ladies and gentlemen? The leader. The leader. <laughs> the leader. You got it. The leader. They try to kill the thoughts. They, they try to kill you when, you when you start thinking of what? Outside the box when you want to do something differently. And if you don't start thinking out the box in the world we live in every day, what happens to you? The world says what? It just will eat you alive. It will come and control everything you have. Your thoughts, your way of living, your culture, everything. Because we think what? We stop thinking. We stop reinventing. We stop developing. We stop innovating. Because we get very comfortable. So I, I, I realized that, you know, that I wasn't free. For years, I wasn't free. I thought I was free. I had a race-based consciousness growing up. All black towns surrounded by White County, and the, the word was nothing ever comes out of Whitesboro. Grew up with low self-esteem and a lack of confidence, confidence in myself because of the two disabled brothers in my family. I had to deal with that. Got teased a lot. And the only thing that really got me out from, really, I worked in the prison system for five years, but, the, but I would have been a prisoner in that system with the rage that I had. But the only thing that helped me what? Is I did what? I played the little hoops. And I was pretty good all state, you know, all East Coast, and played in the European Pro League a number of years. And, and the only thing that helped me gave me what? It gave me just a what? Enough self-confidence to say, well, maybe I'm okay. Maybe I'm all right. And when I got out and started traveling around the world a little bit, worked in a number of businesses and all of that, worked with a number of people, and began to travel to South Africa 13 or 14 years ago, escorted Nelson Mandela's children to see him when he was released from Paws Moore, and you know, worked for a guy, the, the Bob Brown. He was special assistant to President Nixon for a number of years, I worked for him, and we traveled all over. I began to see, oh, it's not about my race. I've been used. I've been hoodwinked. It's about what? It's about my development. So I'm talking to y'all right here. I'm talking to y'all right here, this group right here. You know what it's about? It's not about your race. It's not about your gender. It's not about your class. It's not about how much your parents had or didn't have. It's about what? It's about you and your development. And all you have to do is take the information and apply it to your own personal growth every single day. Because the only thing that makes us equal, ladies and gentlemen, and when I got this, I understand, oh, this is what freedom is. The freedom to be able to process and think. And I wrote a book called Move Without the Ball. Just came out. The reason I wrote Move Without the Ball, why? Is because 67% of African American boys believe they're going to be what? A professional athlete. And 35% of white boys believe they're going to be what? Michael Jordan. <laughs> and so if you do not have a B plan, and all you're doing is playing basketball all day long. What happens when you get to be 18 of years of age and you have nowhere to go and the ball stops bouncing and you're still looking for what? To dream. And you know what I realized when I worked in the prison system? And my daughter said this to me, and this is her quote. She says, Dad, she says, they're still playing basketball in prison. They're still looking for the dream locked up. Because the dream is where? In their heads. Nothing wrong with being a, 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 a good athlete. I was a, you know, I, I had the dream too. I'm just saying, 
take the same skills, take the same de determination, take the same, I'm not going to quit, same to, take the same stuff that you learn in sports and do what? Transfer it to everything that you do. Be everything. Be all of that. Okay, so when I discovered this freedom thing and this process thing, it woke me up. I, I'm just here trying to wake you all up. That's all I'm, I'm here. That's what my message is all around the world. Wake folks up. Get them out of what? That small place that keeps them confined. And now you don't have to stay. You can stay there if you want. But there's a process for doing that. Okay, next slide. So in the 21st century, business and entrepreneurship are more important today in a climate where there are fewer guarantees. So, so what we're talking about, even for 17, 18, 19, 20 years of age, students that are focusing on what the world's going to be like in years to come, ladies and gentlemen, people now who are 65 and thought they what? Thought they could stay home? They have to now go back to work. They thought, I could retire. And now I'm 65 years of age. I spent all those years on this job. And I have to go back and what? Work. Start that whole process all over again. To compete in today's market, it's not about one approach. It's about too many approaches. Because you got that little clicker, and you're looking at 600 channels. And you don't remember anything you, you saw anyway. So how do you get your message out? You got a message. How do you get, out, get it out in this, in this complex market where now it's become a global village? So now your competition is not just what? You got all kinds of people coming to this country, all kinds of colors, all kinds of backgrounds. They're, they're doing what? They're taking all kinds of different jobs. Outsourcing is what? Outsourcing everything? You know, you're competing against the whole world now. What's that mean? That means to me, you better learn how to read well. If you do not know how to read well, what happens? What happens if you can't read in today's world? There's no more, there's no, no, no labor. Nobody's talking about labor. Industrial age is over. It's about what? What's it about? This is the information age. So you got to work with your what, ladies and gentlemen? Your brain. If your brain is not working, what happens? You just sit back and somebody's going to take your job. Take your position. You got to use your brain, young folks. This is the information age all over the world. And if you don't get the third one, which is technology, what happens? You can't communicate to the world. Nobody's talking to anybody anymore. This is a, this is a what? This is, this is the airways now. You don't even have to have any wires anymore. Forget the wires. It's about transmitting thoughts throughout the, the world. That's an opportunity. That's not a bad thing. That's a what? It's a good thing if you're not left behind. The world is getting smaller. So is the market share. So are the opportunities. Next slide. OK, talent. This is about talent. And when I learned this, that the, that the, that the, the way I see myself is the way the world sees me. What is the question? The question is, I have to change what? The way I see myself. So I have to change my program. So I have to keep changing that. The value that I give myself is the value the world gives me. What's the challenge? What's the question? I got to give myself as much value as I possibly can. The more value I give me, the more value the world gets me, the more money I make, the more opportunities I have. If I walk around like this with my head down, how does the world see me? With my head down. If I walk in angry, how does the world see me? It's very simple, isn't it? 
You get a chance, I brought a book called Build Your Own Life Brand. You get a chance to change your brand, to brand yourself in the marketplace based on how you want to be perceived. So if you walk into your job and you're angry and upset, how many people see you angry and upset? That's a very simple thing. How many people angry and upset? Uh, how many people see you angry and upset on that job? And pass the word and say, what, what about you? Don't mess with them because they're angry and upset. Leave them alone. Okay, I'm preaching now. All right, next slide. How big is this leadership, ladies and gentlemen? Now, we're not even talking about leadership. Leadership is about people following you based on your philosophy. We're talking about self-leadership. Let's just talk about self-leadership. Can you lead yourself? Do you have the ability to lead yourself? Do you have the discipline to lead yourself? Or do we kind of focus on all the emotional things, which are basically, oh, okay, I'm going to do what I what feel like doing. Because we've been so programmed to do what? Do everything we feel like doing. I don't feel like it. So we never turn the brain on, right? Because we don't feel like doing it. And because we come from an emotional background, what's that mean? That means out of our history, we've been taught to react what? Through emotions. Nobody's ever taught, said, you know, sit down a minute, son, or daughter, sit down. Let me just talk to you. So what we have to do instead of talking to people, we want them to, you know, we want them to move. What do we do instead of, instead of talking? My mother and father, what did they do? They didn't sit down and say, son, I want to talk to you. What did they do? Some of y'all that, that's old as I am, what, what, what did they do? They whip your tail. Because they couldn't talk. And so we, we get that same message, and what do we do? We, don't, we, we carry the same emotional message, and we end up not being able to talk because of the program. Okay, next slide. So the greatest opportunity, opportunity to achieve in your life is to have a sense. We're talking about do you know, ladies and gentlemen, who you are? That's the question. Do you know who you are? That is so interesting. How long does it take you to know who you are? Can somebody answer that? All your life, you are trying to figure out who you are. It doesn't stop at 65 or 70 or 50 or 40. It's, it's what? It's a continuous process of reinventing yourself when? Every day based on the 24 hours that you have, because that's the only thing that makes us equal. We got, everybody's got 24 hours. The question is, what do we do with our 24 hours? We need to reinvent ourselves every single day. It's having clarity and alignment so we can bring all those pieces. We're over here, we're over here, we're over here, we're over here, because we're, 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 we're not clear on who we are. So the ability to be clear and have a centerpiece where we can say, okay, this is my centerpiece, this is my foundation. Instead of me focusing on the external and giving everything away, what am I going to do? I'm going to take all the resources of the world. The world is a collection of unlimited wealth and resources. So we're going to take all those resources and do what? Instead of us working for the world, we're going to let the world do what? Work for us. Based on who we are. We're going to dictate to the whole world who we are. And have you work for us based on the resources available in the world. How many resources are there in the world? unlimited. Don't let anybody tell you what you can't do. That's, your, that's their issue. It's not yours. Learning how to make information relevant. Well, interesting. Okay, how do you make education relevant to your own heart and soul? Because we forget all this information. We got all these books in the bookstore. You can't possibly remember all the information. What do you remember? Information that, that, that is applicable to what? Your heart and soul, and it's applicable to you. So if you can imagine just going through, I mean, I, I go through it. I read all the newspapers every, every day, every newspaper. I probably read seven, eight newspapers, maybe seven or six newspapers, Financial Daily, uh, Investor Daily, Financial Times, Investor Daily, 
uh, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, all the national, USA Today, national newspapers, then the local newspapers, wherever I am. What am I looking for? I'm not looking to, to, to see about, I'm not talking about, you know, stuff that happened, murder, and all the stuff that you read about. I'm, I'm, what am I looking for? I'm looking for relevant information that somebody put together that I can apply to what? To my own personal life, to give me ability to be able to what? Think differently today than I thought yesterday. So I get all the magazines that relate to what? To me and to my field. Now imagine that. Just take, cutting out articles. People see, people see me on the plane just pulling out articles, pulling out articles. And then I'll take a, a sheet and then I'll just outline the article. And I'll make that, take that information. I'll get ideas from other people and start what? Develop new products. Create new opportunities based on what? The re resources of the world. Now, if you did that with all the books, and you targeted what you're interested in, if you're interested in accounting, then you want to be the best accountant in the world based on the information available to you, based on your thinking. That is a great process. Next slide. So the world's a collection of unlimited wealth and resources. Often we limit our potential by moving in our own small circles because we don't know how to do it, ladies and gentlemen. They just say, go to work and go to what? School. What's the challenge? It's to change the way we think, not once a week, not twice a week, but what? Every single day. And then you get, if we change the way we view the world, we change the way we look at the world. This is the whole world. This is not just Melbourne. This is not Cocoa Beach. What? It's the whole world. If we change the way we view the world, there's nothing we cannot accomplish. Now, get that. That's what this seminar is for. This is for what? This lecture series is for what? So you understand what we understand. And that uh, uh, what you all understand, you can be anything and do anything you want if you understand how to do it. Next slide. So things do not happen. That means you've got to take control of your life. Why do you have to take control of your life? Because if you don't, somebody else will. And they may not be that nice to you. Even in your relationship, even in your family, they what? They may get jealous of your what? Because you got more than they got. So it's not, it's about what? It's about, it's about being able to understand that you got to control every single thing. You understand what I'm talking about. Okay, next slide. So the maximize one's potential is a two-step two process. We understand that most people focus on the external, right? Where's the work that have to, where, where, where's the most, most of the work have to be done? On the internal. I mean, when you go to church, what, what, what are they working on? Internal. They can change your way of thinking. What happens? Your life starts to change. Because you're getting it all right. You're getting it all lined up. So that's why religion is, you know, is very important because they're trying to give you that, that foundation, that peace that allows you to line everything up together. So internal plus the external, not minus the external. Internal plus the external equals maximum potential. But what you have to go inside, what happens when you start to go inside and examine yourself and your life? It's painful. Why did that happen to me? I got to revisit that situation. I got to unpeel the onion. I got to go back to what? I got to get those layers and layers and layers of rage. Anybody know what rage is? It's that stuff that what? You know, we look great here, don't we? we we're really, we're nice and speaking to people very nice, but let us hit the wrong button. <laughs> Let's just go a little deeper and you say, I never seen my dad like that. I never seen him in this person. I, I thought this person would say it's always so nice. But you hit the wrong button, and what happens? Different ball game. Okay, next slide. So we're going to talk about the success process, which is a process I created that will organize. It's a systematic process to organize and advance not my life's goals, but your life's goals and aspirations. It's the how. How do you do that? There's a process for that. It's bigger than just going to work and getting a job. 
Anybody can get a job. I'm not talking about a job. What am I talking about? I'm talking about an L-I-F-E. Can you get a life? It's the how. I and mean, we want to increase your focus. Why? Because whatever you focus on grows. When you don't focus, students, that's why they say focus, focus, focus. Focus brings depth. Focus brings richness. Focus brings uniqueness. So when they say focus, focus brings expertise. Focus brings energy. You feel good when you know more. When you become an expert in the marketplace, you're able to do what? Command attention because you are focusing on something over and over. Wealth is about what? Focus. Mr. Simpkins will tell you, wealth is about focus. It's doing something better than somebody else does it. It's a numbers game. It's how many things you can repeat over and over. Sit-ups is about what? Some of y'all athletes. Sit-ups is about focus. It's about repetition. It's how many you do. So you could be, you know, and, and consumption is about what? Consumption, you could be a consumer or you could be a producer. You can produce more than you consume, you have more. You consume more than you produce, you're in debt. And so savings is about what? It's a numbers game. And so all this is a number game. It's repetition. So it's finding the, 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 what you want to create and do it over and over the same way, what? at the highest level you can. So when we talk about focus, focus is a beautiful thing if you're clear on what you want to focus on. And you work at it and you work hard and all of that. Okay. We want to help improve relationships. How do you help improve relationships? How do you build relationships? Relationships is not about the external. Relationships is about the internal. So the way you build relationships is you invest in yourself. Why? Because the more you have, the more you're able to Give. Nothing in, nothing out. Next slide. Okay, so first step, you got to have this. This is the most, most important step. If you do not get this step, you can only be average. First step is based on the most powerful word in the world. I did this this morning. Whoever was here this, this morning in the other session, don't say anything. What is the most powerful word in the world, ladies and gentlemen? Love. Who said that over here? You got it right the first time. Round of applause for you. First, most powerful round of applause for you. Stand up. Stand up. That's it. The most powerful word in the world is love. Why? Why is love? You stand up a minute. You stand up a minute. Stand up. Why is love so important? What happens when you love something? You what? You start, you feel, you feel for it. What happens when you love something? You're passionate about it. What happens when you love something? You take care of it. What happens when you love something? You nurture it. What happens when you love something? You can't, you don't want to give it away. So when you love something, thank you very much, when you love something, the ability to love something gives you the energy to do what? Own it. You want to own it. So love. Question is, what is your passion? So when you get the love thing right, when you can, I ask students this all the time, I say, write down everything that you love. How many things, that, I'll give you two hours to write down everything that you love. How many things do you think they could write down? I don't give them two hours. I give them probably 10 minutes. But if I gave them two hours, how many things could they write down? How many things could you write down, young people? A lot. What's the question? What am I trying to get you to understand? How do you take the 24 hours, okay, and build your life around everything that you what? Love. That's it. That's who you are. You are what you love. If you find what you hate, what happens to your energy? I hate this job. 
I hate to get up and do this. I don't like this person I'm around. I don't, I don't like this hobby. I hate this golf. So find out, I love the golf, but find out something that you love. Build a whole life around everything that you love. Okay, so what are your weakness? What's your passion? What do you love to do? So the question becomes is, is that if you're in high school or you're in college, you're trying to line up all the courses that you really love. Now, some courses you have to take, and some courses you, you, you may not like, but the fact of the matter is if you have a bigger goal, if you have a bigger vision of where you want to go, then you can what? You'll, you'll do that because your vision is I need to accomplish this because this is what I love and I need to do this because this is required based on where I want to go. Next step. Next slide. Where there is no vision, the people perish. So what's the road map? Now that I know what I love, how far can I create what I love? What is my range? Where am I going with that? What's my life's destination? What's my road map that's going to take me there? Now the road map is critical because oftentimes what will happen is that you'll have obstacles over here and you'll have obstacles over here and somebody will say, you know what, you can't do that. But what keeps you on track? Your vision. Somebody had to have a vision to build this shopping center down here. Somebody had a vision. It was, it was once no land. This is land, right? Somebody said, you know what? I'm going to bring, we're going to create a shopping area. Maybe the largest shopping area is what? In the country. That's, that, takes, that takes vision. Where you have no vision, you don't grow. You don't develop. So that's why they say where there's no vision, the good book says where there's no vision, the people perish. Because if you don't have a sense of where you want to go, what happens? I know where you are, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not concerned about where you are. What am I concerned about? What's the question? Where are you going? You can be in school every single day. That's, that's great. And you can be in school for the rest of your life. Tell me what you're going to do with the school that you have. What's the vision for it? And can you communicate that? And are you clear on your vision? And if you're clear on your vision, next step. Next step. You're clear on your vision, then what, what will happen with the plan? The plan becomes easy with the vision because it's already been done. Anything you are, you're going to ever do, it's already been done. So it's being able to go get the information, and apply it to your vision based on your uniqueness, based on who you are. That, oh my goodness, I just took those three steps. I know who I am, you can't take that. I'm willing to die for that. I know where I'm going, you can't stop me because it's bigger than what you think, it's bigger than who you are. And I got to plan, I'm taking all the information that I get from all over the world and applying to my goals, creating goals. And I'm going to manage my time every single day. I'm not going to just do the same thing over and over every single day. Next slide. Master the rules of the road. Then I'm going to put some of this with it. I'm going to put some hard work with it. What happens when you put hard work with that? You got a plan? You mean you can follow that plan every single day? You got the pieces and you're going to put what? You're going to take the 24 hours and the people that you know, you're going to put some delegation on that, and you're going to work hard. You're going to build your business based on a, a program, and you're going to ask me, you're going to say, you know what, can you help me with this? i got a plan here. Look at this plan. Tell me what you think about this plan. And I said, well, you're missing this, 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 and this, but I got that. I can help you. Merle Lynch, tell me what you think about this plan. And so the ability to be able to now say, okay, you know, how am I going to build relationships? Positive attitude, determination. What about this term, determination thing? If you quit, what happens to your plan? You fail. So you don't have to be the smartest or the strongest, but you better do what? Hang in there the longest. You know, we, we, I mentioned Oprah, what, what she has. She is, you know, she's done the TV thing, and she's done the, you know, she does very well in what she does, and that's a good thing. And that's her thing. That's good for her. She's passionate about what? Talk. She loves to talk. And she talks all the time, right? And she has, a, she has a great show doing talking because that's what, that's her passion, right? But what keeps her in the game, ladies and gentlemen? What 
game. She's got what? What does she have? She has determination. You can't stop determination. You can't stop it. So when you're determined, regardless of what people might say, you got to have that peace. That's the peace. You don't have determination. You quit. At, at, you know, when things go wrong, you just quit. They're not going your way. You just quit. Determination. Okay, next slide. Then you got to have, you know, attitude is altitude. Next slide. If you have a negative attitude, how many people can you fit in that space? Maybe one, maybe two. Because they, they, you know, only two people can deal with your stuff. <laughs> That's about it. But when you have a smile on your face, next slide, what happens? You open up the whole world. A lot of times, if you just show up on time, if you dress nice, and you have a positive attitude, you can make a pretty good living. Just that, those three things. Positive attitude. OK, next slide. And so it's about your energy. What kind of positive energy do you have? This has been so big for me because I use this in my own life. And it's the ability to be able to change any, anything that happens to me in a negative way, change it to a positive. That means don't react, don't respond, do what? Move it out of my way. Don't let it become stressful for me and push it back out. So what's my challenge? I gotta figure out how to if you say something negative to me, I got to figure out how do I change it around so what happens? So it doesn't affect me. That's a very interesting process. It's to reflect and don't let it come and absorb your life. Because none of this stuff is personal. You know, so we have to separate ourselves from what? All the negative stuff and figure out how we manage it. Because I may say something that may cost me what? Cost me because I can't control myself or I can't move it around. Um, next slide. So the energy thing is really big. And, and on that energy thing, again, is what I try to do is make myself feel good every single day. So it's the workout, it's the stuff that I read, it's the people I'm around. Try to make sure that I, have, I can maintain positive energy because it's not about the time, it's about the energy. Then I can go into my office and I can get 15 things done or 20 things done much faster. If my energy is down, how many things can I get done? I may not get anything done that day because I'm still focusing on I don't feel well today. So it's how do, you, how do you take the positive energy and make yourself feel good about your existence every single day? And sometimes you've got to move that negative stuff out your way. Okay. So step five, step into the outer limits. There's only two emotions. There's fear and there's love. And this fear thing, how big is the fear thing in our lives? Where are we learning from? We learn from home. So what happens is that we, we can look at one parent and say, well, I got my fear from this parent. I got my fear from that parent. So the idea of being able to, to, again, try to deal with the fear, if you live by fear, or, and try to change it into uh, living by things that are positive, again, and being able to understand that risk is a natural part of life, and staying the same as standing still. So all the changes we go through, being able to confront that fear and assess your risk. Okay, next slide. Step six, not so much what happens to you, but how you respond to it. A lot of folks in, in prison today because somebody stepped on their toe. So they didn't have the internal capacity to deal with what? Changes that happen in your life. I know Florida has been hit by how many hurricanes? Four? Four this year. Talk about changes that you had to go through. The question is what? What's the question? Not so much what happens to you, but what? How you, how you become resilient to the changes that are going to happen in your life. How deep is your internal capacity to deal with change? Because some people will break. Some people can't deal with a lot of changes. And as soon as changes come, what do they do? They either run or so many changes happen, they break. So if you can just last, if you can just hang in there long enough, I can tell you one thing, it will change. It will change. Okay, next slide. Seven, 
No one makes it alone. No man or woman is an island unto themselves. So you cannot do it by yourself. It takes a team of people to do what? To build a development. It takes a team of people to run a business. It takes a team of people to run this community college. It takes a team of people to run a state university. It doesn't happen by itself. It happens with a team. How do you get a team? Well, the team has to buy into your vision. Do you have a vision that people want to buy into? Do you have common goals and commonalities? Do you have people that do certain things that they can bring to the table? So when you talk about a team, you want to talk about that last one, which is, can you find somebody that really cares about you and care about where you're going? So the team, the idea of having a team. Next, next, next slide. Step eight, win by choices. Life is about, again, I mean, companies spend a lot of money doing research so they can what? So they can make the right choices. So the ability to be, be able to make good choices is predicated on, again, uh, having the right information. And for years, if you're walking around thinking, I can't make it because of, my, because of the color of my skin or where I came from, or because of my class, or because my parents didn't have enough money, ladies and gentlemen, bad information. So the idea of getting the right information so you can make the right choices is critical. The idea of also being able to understand that if your life is going this way, you're probably making pretty good choices. This is very simple. If your life is going that way, you're probably making bad choices. Okay, next slide. Step nine. Now we talked about passion. We talked about love. We talked about vision. We talked about planning. We talked about master the rules of the road. We talked about guiding principles. We talked about building the dream team. Now. You can decide what you want to do with this information. You can either be a follower or you can be a leader. You can control your life or you can let somebody else run your life. So the decision really is up to you what you want to do with, you know, and so it's okay either way. But if you want to maximize your potential, if you want to be able to be, do, do everything you want to do based on the world's resources, I'm saying to you that you can do that. That's the message here today. You can do that. So you have to make a commitment to be able to do that. A commitment is something that you live. So we're talking about living the commitment every single day based on who you are. I want to, in this presentation, before we go to Q&A, if we have time to do that, with a story called The Race. And this book is a very, very important book. It really teaches, I think, a great lesson. And if you don't have this, it's very hard to, 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 to achieve the, the dreams that you, wanted, that you want to dream and, and achieve the success that you want. And, and oftentimes, you're, you're, it, it's tough because, you know, the world's saying to you, quit, give up, you're beaten. They shout at me and plea. There's just too much against you now. This, this time you can't succeed. And as I start to hang my head, this guy, he's sitting there in the chair, and he's having a tough time. He's wondering how he's going to make it, and the whole world's telling him to quit. And, he, and, he, and, and as he starts to hang, hang his head in front of failure's face, his downward fall is broken by the memory of a race. And hope refills my weakened will as I recall that scene. For just the thought of that short race rejuvenates my being. A children's race, young boys, young men. How I remember, well, excitement, sure, but also fear. It wasn't hard to tell. They all lined up, so full of hope. Each thought to win that race, or tie for first, if not that, at least take second place. And fathers watch from off the side. Each child son, or hope to show his dad that he would be the one. The whistle blew, and off they went, young hearts and hopes of fire. To win and be the hero there was each young boy's desire. And one boy in particular, who, who was dad was in the crowd, was running near and, and the lead and thought, my, my dad will be so proud. But as they sped down the field uh, across a shallow dip, the little boy who lost his step, who thought to win, he lost his step, and what? 
and slipped. Trying hard to catch himself, his hands flew out the brace, but amid the laughter of the crowd, he, he fell flat on his face. So down he fell, and with him hope, he couldn't win it now. Embarrassed, sad, he only wished to disappear somehow. But as he fell, his, his dad stood up and showed his anxious face, which to the boy so clearly said, get up and win the race. He quickly rose, no damage done behind a bit, that's all, and ran with all his mind and might to make up for his fall. So, so anxious to restore himself, to catch up in the wind, his mind went faster than his legs. Guess what? He slipped and fell again. He wished that he had quit before with only one disgrace. I'm hopeless as a runner now. I, I shouldn't try to race. But in the laughing crowd, he searched and found his father's face. That steady look which said again, get up and win the race. So he jumped up to try again, 10 yards behind the last. If I'm to gain those, these, those yards, he thought, I've, I've got to move real fast. Exerted everything he had to regain eight or 10, but trying so hard to catch the lead, guess what, y'all? He, he slipped <laughs> and fell again. Defeat, he lay there silently, a tear dropped from his eye. There's no sense running any, 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 anymore. Three strikes, I'm out. Why try? The will to rise had disappeared. All hope had fled away. So far behind, so error prone, a loser all the way. I'm lost, I've lost, so, so what's the use? He thought, I'll, I'll live with my disgrace. But then he thought about his dad, who soon he'll have to face. Get up, an echo sounded low. Get up and take your place. You were not meant for failure here. Get up and win the race. With borrowed will, get up, it said. You, you haven't lost at all, at all. For winning is no more than this, to rise each time you fall. So up he rose to run once more. With a new commit, he resolved that what? Win or lose, at least he wouldn't quit. So far behind the others now, the most he's ever been, still he gave it all he had and ran as though to win three times. He's fallen, stumbling. Three times he rose again too far behind to hope to win. He still ran to the end. They cheered. The winning runner, as he crossed the line first place, head high and proud and happy, no falling, no disgrace. But when the falling youngster crossed the line last place, the crowd gave him the greater cheer for finishing the race. And even though he came in last, with head bowed low, I'm proud. You would have thought he won the race to listen to the crowd. And to his dad, he said, he said, I, Dad, I, I didn't do too well. To me, you won, his father said. You rose each time you fell. And now, and now when things seem dark and hard and difficult to face, the memory of that little boy helps me in my race. For all of life is like that race, with ups and downs and all. And all you have to do to win is rise each time you fall. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.
appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Graham. I think we have a couple of minutes that we could take some questions if people will use the mics up front. We have a question here. Yes, Mr. Is the mic on? Is the mic on? Is the mic on? Now is it on? So I'll yell. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Well Pardon me? Uh, the question is, what are the three things that I am most proud of in my life? Uh, I would say that um, one, of, of course, is to be able to uh, find out who I am so that whether I'm talking to a person who doesn't have much or talking to the President of the United States, I can be the same person. So I don't think one person's any better than the other. That's what I'm most, that's one of the things I'm most proud of. The secondly, or that I'm any better than anybody else. The second thing is that um, being able to understand the process of success and how business works and to be able to engage myself at different levels. So to be able to, again, understand how the American Free Enterprise works and, and how the systems work and be able to think about where I fit inside of that. Um, I think the other thing is being able to um, um, travel around the world um, and be with a woman that you know, that, reach, that does what she does, I'm proud of that, the relationship that I have with Oprah and, and who she is and what she represents and being able to share that. She does what she does in the air, I do it on the ground. So the difference is, we're in the same business essentially, but to be able to travel around the world and impact people's lives based on changing their perception about what their possibilities are. That to me and, uh, is just, you know, that, that's a blessing for me. Okay, one more question? Uh, yes, we have a book signing this afternoon. At one... Yes. Does that mic work? Okay. Testing. Okay, great. <laughs> My man. How you doing? Good. How are you doing? <laughs> Hello, my name is Ted Jass. I'm from um, Coco High School, um, A Plus Academy. Um, I have a question for you. Out of the three C's, confidence, competent, competence, and capability, which one is the most important to you and why? Um, I, I think the um, capabilities are important because it's really a development issue. And you can develop at 101 level. There's 101 levels. There's a 102 level. There's a 103 level, there's a 104 level, and there's a 105 level. And so 101 level will get you a certain kind of a conversation. It will, it will allow you maybe not to understand anything about anything. It probably, you're probably more of a, um, uh, you're probably more emotional. You may not have a high school education. You may not understand how anything works. You react based on your feelings. So if you change your capabilities where you can become a 102, Maybe you have a high school education, you want things, you, you, don't, you don't want to hit somebody over the head because you're 101, now you move to 102, you start to think a little bit, you want to be somebody, 103, maybe you have a college education. And so, and so the idea of being able to develop yourself so that you can, um, again, have the capabilities, and the capabilities give you the confidence. It gives you the confidence to believe in yourself. And the belief piece is incredible because if you don't believe in yourself, I don't care how many opportunities come by, you're not going to take them because you're always trying to validate yourself and you don't think you're good enough. So for you as a young man to believe, the most important thing for you to be is to be able to believe that you can do anything and be anything you want based on what you bring to the table, which has nothing to do with anybody else. It doesn't have anything to do with your parents or where you came from except that's your history. It has everything to do with your capabilities right now and what you develop. And if you focus on that, 
in developing your capabilities based on what you bring to the table, you can be anything you want, and that's yours. And that's what's important about you as a human being. Good job. Thank you. I had a question. I really got a lot out of the, the part when you're talking about having a passion for what you do, and then you're not really, it's not work if you have a passion for it. What if, what would you say to the, 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 the people, you know, it's, it's often been said you have to have money to make money. What would you say to the people that maybe are at that stage of their life or their, their path that they're, they, they're not doing what they really want to be doing, but they know, you know, they, they're never, I should say this, they don't have a passion maybe for what they're doing right now, but they know it's a necessity to get where they're going. What would you say maybe to that type, those type of people that maybe like an encouragement or a, uh, maybe a motivator or something that you're kind of tr trudging through the have to do's to get to the want to do's? Well, it, 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 you know, for me, realizing that, and what's your first name? James. James. James, realizing that for me it's about alignment and putting my energy all in the same line and the resources and aligning everything together. So, number one, and that, and that includes education. Aligning everything together where you have a, you can create these small successes. And, and I live in a big space, so my space is this big. You know, I live in, inside this huge world. The key is not to own, try to own the world. The key is to try to figure out how you can create small successes inside that world. And so the idea of being able to take a small success and make it, make that a success, and then take another success and create that, and then take another success and make that and create that. And then having that aligned with the direction that you're, that you're going, having a vision of where you, want, where you want to achieve, and align those successes with that vision. Now, the example would be, how do you get to the top of the mountain? One step at a time, OK? So you can, you can do this up the top of the mountain all day long, right? But what's going to happen? You're going to burn out. So you're going to get tired. So the idea is take small steps, create small successes that you can be a proud of. Then you attach your feeling to that success. And you look back at that and you say, you know what, I'm proud. So when you talk about money and trying to find money for this and money for that, the first thing that people look for is that, what have you done before? What credibility do you have that allows you to be able to ask me for a loan or for financing? Can you actually do it? Uh, and so you have, to look at the, you have to look at how you can create and align the successes that will get you, the small successes will get you the big successes. If you can't do it in a small way, you can't do it, Mr. Simpkins, am I right? If the person doesn't do a, a good, good job in a small way, you can't possibly make him chairman of your company. So you have to show success at every single level. When you do that, you'll get the confidence, you'll get the capabilities, you'll be, you'll be able to feel good about yourself, which translates to me. I'm, I'm looking at you. I'm saying, okay, what, what, you know, let me look at you a minute. Let's see how weak you are. What's your foundation like? Where did you come from? So I want to know your background. I know we want to know what your parents' background was because that I can pretty much tell how you think based on where you came from, unless you can change that pattern or break that pattern. So it's an ability to be able to, again, take control of your life and create the kind of environment and create the kind of credibility and success that you want so that you can put all that in a straight line and go where you want to go. And you can't, you can't, you can't be stopped. Mr. Graham has to move on to another session. Let's give him another round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. If you will look at your programs, if you see a gold seal in your program, if you will step to the lobby and the, there will be a signed autographed copy of Mr. Stebman's book and a BCC gift. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll get